multi, pluri, inter ou pluri, inter ou transdisciplinarity. These terms are often used in a very blurry way and interchangeable way. But I want to uh, make you understand what they mean, the different approaches, and what the advantages and limitations are. Multidisciplinarity, first of all, in spite of the ambiguity it carries, it's only the multidisciplinary system that we're all familiar with because we used it in school where the knowledge and skills were clearly divided. There is no will to make these skills collaborate with each other. And we're so familiar with this system that we tend to forget that it was not applied so strictly over the centuries, neither in school nor in the evolution of human thought and knowledge. For instance, naturalists in the 16th, 17th, and 18th century were botanists, anthropologists, zoologists, astronomers, mathematicians, philosophers, and they had these closets full of oddities a large number of uh, objects uh, and knowledge acquired uh, during the travel across the world. Now, the division was increased over the centuries and led to increased specialization. What used to be just sciences became uh, exact sciences on the one hand, human sciences, and finally philosophy. This division, this breakdown, is the one that still holds in schools and universities. And it, it was even uh, pushed further with new specializations within those, this, those disciplines. I wouldn't have enough time if I wanted to list all of the sub-disciplines which developed in order to reach the knowledge and technologies that we are familiar with today. So if this breakdown, strict breakdown, was promoted and is still proving useful, it is because it allowed us to make huge progress. The disjunctive or Cartesian approach of reality contributed to the development of very specialized researchers, IT, sciences, engineering, or mathemat mathematics would never have reached the degree of perfection that we're enjoying today. So why do we hear about inter or transdisciplinarity? Because progressively we are, we are becoming aware of the fact that the new problems we're facing are due to the disjunctive vision of reality. By dividing the world's complexity in little pieces, we find that difficulties appear in the open spaces between the disciplines. We therefore understand now it's important to take several perspectives into account so that reality can show itself in its full complexity. I'll give you an example, a metaphor. In order to determine the shape of this object in space, we have to see it from a different perspective. And we may discover that what we thought to be a disk or a sphere was actually a cylinder. Based on this observation, pluridisciplinarity is the first step towards a search for on the research on complexity. However, it does not depart from the uh, disciplinary logic. Each discipline remains limited to its own knowledge and epistemology. It simply applies the idea according to which the several objects can be studied under several different perspectives. Therefore, we add to the uh, objective breakdown a common objective. Nicolescu says that the pluridisciplinary uh, approach goes beyond disciplines, but still the objective is within the disciplines. For instance, the environmental dimension of sustainable development. The economist thinks that the method should take into consideration the effect of economic activity on the environment and therefore will limit the scope for economy's impact on uh, development. The biologists will analyze the impact on biodiversity, and there will be uh, superimposed uh, data, which will remain only information. In other words, one may say that pluridisciplinarity does not allow to fill the gaps, which we are starting to understand uh, 
are present between the disciplines. We have to work on the intersections, and this is what inter- and transdisciplinarities are working on. Quoting Valkoviak, interdisciplinarity is about making disciplines talk to each other to create bridges between the various skills. Nicolescu says that this dialogue allows to transfer methods from one discipline to another. He distinguishes different uh, ways to use interdisciplinarity. I'd like to give you an example which I think is quite revealing. Nuclear physics methods are transferred to medicine and will lead to the discovery of new cancer treatments. Therefore, we have the tools from one discipline applied to a different discipline. These tools may be knowledge, skills, methods, or epistemological contributions. In other words, one may say that interdisciplinarity builds bridges between the disciplines with the exchange of specific tools, but does not fill the gaps. And when it does try to fill the gaps, it actually leads to the explosion of the disciplines. Nicolescu provides an example. Transferring methods from mathematics to physics, this has led to mathematical physics. Dimer gives the example of interdisciplinarity for sustainable development called industrial ecology. This may be a new train of thought, a new current of thought combining engineering sciences, the search for solutions for environmental issues, ecology, metabolism, symbiosis, management sciences, the cost-benefit analysis or the value analysis and economic sciences, allocation methods for rare resources, etc. Interdisciplinarity is therefore a combination of skills for a common project, closing cycles, reducing waste and dematerializing products. The last approach, transdisciplinarity, is trying to do things the other way around, reversing the approach. While talking about existing disciplines, it raises a question to know whether they have a point of convergence, something in common that will unify them within a bigger project that will go beyond them. Therefore, the discipline is only there to serve a knowledge located at the intersection of disciplines. It is probably the most remote from the current skills, but it is the one practiced in state-of-the-art research, for instance, for the new technologies which are necessary for sustainable development. The CIRET Charter, the CIRET Charter says that transdisciplinarity is complementary with disciplinary approaches, thereby new data emerges from the confrontation articulating the disciplines between them. Transdisciplinarity is not trying to control several disciplines, but to open all disciplines to what goes through them and goes beyond them. We can ask the question of how to define the points of convergence when we talk about sustainable development. I will give you an example for state-of-the-art research and technological development in favor of sustainable development. The various disciplines, nanotechnologies, IT, engineering, biology, chemistry, physics, are used so that what they pool in common is goes beyond what each of them could have produced into and therefore the final result is transversal and could not be defined by a single of those disciplines. Another example here with less disciplines involved, but exactly the same definition.